In the last hour, the New Patriotic Party has adored a campaign team they believe is formidable enough to break the aid. Today, uh, the National Executive Committee meeting and the National Council meeting jointly, the flag bearer and vice president, Dr. Mahmoud Baumia, presented his list and was thoroughly debated. Some of the individuals, individuals that were original on it, for I understand, uh, bargained. Some of them got off, some of them got on. In the end, a complete list now has been put out in the last hour. And we're going to be talking about that. This, after all, is the day when we launched the election headquarters. And as you know, the campaign is now in full swing. Dr. Baumia launches campaign. He is now put forth the individuals who will be prosecuting that agenda on his behalf. This is your election headquarters, and it is brought to you by Petrosol. But PM Express is always brought to you by Syntex Tanks. It is strong, it is tough. And if, again, we partnered us for our launch today. Uh, also brought to you by Aloma Betas. Experience greatness in every moment. Ghana AIDS Commission also. Pep student, every smile matters. I'm going to take a break. When I return, we'll be here in your election headquarters. I'll be walking you through the, the, the names that have just been announced that will be leading the campaign for the flag bearer. It includes some very interesting people. Yes, includes the current president. He's part of the campaign structure. It includes John Ajikum Kufo. He's part of the campaign structure. Joyce I, yes, he's, she's part of the campaign structure too. Join us, don't go anywhere. Right after this break, we'll put your names and pictures here and it will analyze that. Is this team strong enough to bring their aid, to attempt to do what all other parties, including MPP, have failed to do in the Fourth Republic? Stay with me. And your election headquarters is brought to you by Petrosol. And indeed, as you know, PMSS is brought to you by Syntex Tanks, Ghana AIDS Commission, Pep Student, Alomo Bites, all of them partnering us to make this possible. As I've been saying, in the last uh, hour, just one hour, the MPP adored a campaign team. They play their hands already. I'm imagining what the NDC is doing right now. They are pouring through that list and watching how do we respond. This is politics of all. When you make the first move, it's like a chess game, you know. Your opponent will have to see how they can counteract the forces that you are deploying. And tonight, the MPP has deployed their forces. The interesting thing is that they have an advisory committee. It is a formidable list of people in there, led by J.A. Kufour. You know him, the man who was the first uh, you know, the candidate on the, on the ticket to the MPP to win a major elections in 2000. He is on that list. I remember him when the Dr. Baumia uh, launched his campaign and laid out his vision. He was there to endorse him. He is number one on the list. Of course, the vice president's own current boss is there at number two, Nana Adodankwa Kofuadov. I mean, think about it. This man has been mentoring the vice president for a long time way since before 2008. And so it is natural to expect that if he wants to have an advisory committee, the current president will be there, right? And you see those two individuals there, formidable politicians in their own right. But I am curious though to, to, to know, can they work together? Um, this committee, assuming they'll be sitting in the same room to advise him or they'll be individually, can the two forces in the party, J.A. Kufo, Akufado, that rivalry that we know existed between them over the period, has that tall enough to a point where they can all put their own weight and unite and come together around one force? Many will say, well, Alan is no longer in the picture. So J.A. Kufo has no uh, uh, hindrances anymore to go all out. And that day when he showed up at the UPSA to back the man, uh, Baumia, it was a signal there that he's done with Alan. He's now focused solely on the current vice president. You have the chairman and members of the National Council of Elders also joining that particular committee. Freddie Blay is there also in his capacity as a former chairman of the party. And then you have Madame Elizabeth O'Hene. That is a strong name indeed. And it tells you that the party values its judgment strongly. But another name for me that 
is going to raise a few eyebrows and people are going to look at this very closely is Joyce Ayi. And Joyce Ayi is there. Reverend Joyce Ayi is there. And that then tells you politically he is very aligned now to the MPP and now actually in the position where we'll be advising the candidate, the vice president, giving the vice president advice as to how to win an election. That will be interesting. Salt and Light Ministries, and you know her, she's, she's done a lot in, in terms of the bringing women together, right, for, for, you know, for, for Christianity and all. So that brings quite of a, a bit of an interesting uh, twist there. And it makes sense, does it not? Because you have a candidate who is Muslim, and you have a reverend minister who is a female. That is a powerful combination. You want somebody there who can also go out there and do, look, advisory committee will be doing far more than advising. We expect that some of them will be going out there to also campaign for him using their own constituencies. And Joyce Ayi has a strong constituency, um, women who come together to pray. And that is something that she can leverage on. Madame Akusio Salapari is the current chief of staff, also there. But here are the, the, big, the big faces who are coming down to, to be the, uh, the, the, the real campaign masters when it comes to orchestrating an electoral machine that delivers a victory, right? That man is there. He is Daniel Kwekuboche. Dan Boche, you know him. He's a campaign chairperson. Very soon, we're going to have him on the show for a conversation uh, because he's been out of the game at this pinnacle for a while. What I mean is, he's done it. He is celebrated as one of the most astute, cunning, political uh, schemers of our time, right? And he has prosecuted campaigns before, and many fear him. He's credited for a lot. He's a legend. is there for everybody to see. But... He, in terms of being at the pinnacle and doing it on a consistent basis, he, he, he's focused on himself for a while. He, he went and contested and became a member of parliament for, for, for Okre. He's now been asked to come back into the role that he was, he was in and where he really made his name. He's, he's still in touch with reality. We will get his own thoughts and ask him these questions when he joins us later on for a conversation uh, as we build up to the, the 2024 elections. But Dan Butcher is there. Uh, Fred Owari has always been there because he's part of the... Uh, the campaign team of the, of the vice president, so no, no change there. Nana Kumia has always been there as a uh, spokesperson, but he's a vice chairperson now, significantly elevated. He was here a short while ago talking about the campaign structure and what we can expect from the, the team. And then you have these campaign managers who have been put together. This is, a, this is a long list of people indeed. You have uh, campaign manager being Frederick Oparian, and they'll be managing the campaign, right? And you have deputy campaign manager in Antoinette, uh, Chibo Darko, who is a research and administration. So everybody has their own particular role. Uh, and then you have the parliamentary campaign. Now, so what the party has decided to do now is to have, of course, um, individuals who will be focused on the presidential candidate himself and others who will be now focused on the parliamentary campaign. And so that is also very important. As you know, we have a hung parliament. And if, if history says anything, the momentum is in, on the side of the NDC. This can actually become a, a terrain where the NDC MPP may struggle. They're putting somebody there to focus on that exclusively. And that's why you also have uh, Ibrahim Anyas there as a presidential uh, campaign focusing on that presidential campaign there. So those are the people there. Obi Yama, by the way, is a the man there in your short. He's no longer a, going to parliament. He's retired already, and he's going to uh, be in that campaign team. And then you have the operation managers. Him you know. He's going to be joining us pretty shortly for a conversation. That is the current national organizer of the MPP in there now as a deputy operations manager. But then the man, Justin Korea from Pond, who you know him as the uh, party general secretary, is the operations manager. You cannot prosecute a campaign without the established elected leaders of the party. And you want to include them in a structure that delivers on the campaign and prosecutes it. And that's the, how they found this operations uh, managerial roles for both the uh, general Secretary and the National Organizer. So where is the National Chairman? It's a very important question. Let's go to the list and see if we can find him. We can find the National Chairman, Stephen Ng Team, but we can find a former National Chairman in Peter McMenu, who is going to be heading the Electoral Affairs Committee. And that question will ask, be asked and answered, and answered when we are joined by the party the party's executives themselves. Where is the National Chairman? The general secretary is there, the national organizer is there, but we don't see civilian team in the picture. But of course, Peter McMenu, when it comes to electoral affairs, he is, he is known to be a very formidable force. 
He's traveled the, the length and breadth of this continent, um, observing and playing a role in electoral affairs. And so he's going to bring that to the ticket as they go into this campaign. And then you have the campaign communications team. These individuals you'll be seeing more of and hearing more of on the show, possibly. But as you know, this is something that they'll have to stomach. Hard questions coming your way indeed this year. Then is Miracle Sabwaji, Director of Communications. We have the first Deputy Communications Director, uh, Adoma Kuberfi. And the second Communications Director, uh, uh, Komini, is also there in the picture. Lots of questions, I don't envy them at all, that they're going to be taking here on your election headquarters. The gloves are off. From today, we launched it. Hard questions coming your way, and they have to answer because they've been in power for a while, and they have some strong ones to answer. And then this list. This list is an interesting list indeed. Uh, this is the campaign senior aides. The first on that list is Kwabunai Japan. This is a man who has been tipped to be Baumier's vice, the Baumier's running mate. This, for me, takes him out of that picture, does it not? Because he has a position already now as a senior aide. And many have said he's possibly been considered because we saw Baumier move. He moves, going to very intimate locations like when, for example, the driver of the, the, you know, the, the security guard who drove the wire was involved in an accident and died, he was seated there right in the front seat uh, at, at, the, at the ceremony to commiserate with the family. That tells you how close they've become, right? Former general secretary of the party. He is top of the list. Takes him off the list of people being considered for the running mate. We're expecting some surprises there when the name comes out. Kofi Jamesi is also there. John Boydu, you remember that name? Former uh, general secretary of the party back in there in some shape or form as a senior aide. Uh, Dr. Susanna Alo, uh, Sally Food Said is there, Sami, Sami Wuku is there, right? Anthony Cabo is also there in the senior aides uh, group. We have Akwesi, Nyame Befi, and Ni Ajay Soa. Though, so that's a strong list of individuals indeed, but that raises a lot. Can they all work together? Because these are individuals who are, all have strong wills, right? And that's a conversation that needs to be had. How do you get all these individuals to work together to achieve one common objective? It's going to be a very difficult task indeed. And the vice president himself must oversee all this and make sure it works. Is, are they possibly throwing too many people big waste into one pool for that purpose? And sometimes that can cause trouble. Isn't it too large? That's the coordinators there. How Akubsin is there. You have Ayue Free is there. Dominic Nitzel, the defense minister. You, it's so interesting list of people that they put together and of course spokesperson the flag bearer and so you have the campaign spokespersons and you have the spokesperson for the flag bearer in dr gideon Bwako, who by the way is joining us right now on our screens hello gideon thanks for joining us here on pms so i have your picture behind me and first of all to that question this is a tall list of very formidable people including former president and the sitting president what went into this election Okay, we have a challenge with Gideon's uh, microphone there. Gideon will join us pretty shortly. Uh, you, uh, yes, he can, I can hear you, Gideon. Thank you very much for staying up and talking to us. This just happened over an hour ago, but I believe you knew your name is going to be here before we called you. I was asking that question earlier. Tall list, formidable people. What went to the thinking to put all these people together to try and prosecute this agenda? Well, I, I guess it, it's quite simple. Um, this is going to be a presidential campaign, but alongside it's also the parliamentary campaign. And if you want to put together a campaign team of this sort, you need to draw from different expertise and different experiences. I guess the main thing that the flag bearer and um, all the decision making bodies have to consider is the experience and the metal of the people that have been assembled here um whichever position or role that is defined or is assigned to a person will have to one way or the other reflect the past experiences that that particular person has for instance if you're talking about me being the spokesperson to the presidential candidate mm -hmm. you don't just appoint somebody to be a spokesperson but you appoint somebody that you think has what it takes to do public communication as their temperament and their experience over time um, on communication. If you want to appoint somebody to do campaign operations for you, and you think about somebody like um, Honorable 
uh, operations as a manager, you think somebody like the general secretary as the head of operations, these are people who have had solid track record in the past. So I think the key thing is the track record and the experience of the people that were brought on board. That, that was one of the key considerations in the selection of the individuals that you see here. Beyond the track record, it's also how you relate to people, because that is key. You're gonna work in a team of people. How has been your relationship with the party people and all other persons um, um, along the line? So these are key things that the flag bearer um, considered. And then also your own you know, uh, strength in the party. You know, must be seen as somebody who cuts across within the rank and file of the party as um, networks across the country. Uh, you have network across, uh, I mean, other political devices as well, depending on the position that you are putting. So each position and rule may require some, you know, um, specification that may be different from other positions. But I think in generality, the experiences of the yeah. people. You, you've explained the rationale, but, but I'm just counting there. I counted 40 people in this campaign structure, it includes former presidents. You run the risk, do you know, because the vice president is the boss. All of them who answer to him, he's the man whose face is on the ballot. You have to manage all these egos. I mean, and the people who are on that list, we know some of them, they have strong characters. That can sometimes become a hindrance to a successful campaign. Because everybody want to pull in their own direction. Well, that is true, but don't forget, um, he is the vice president. And as the vice president, he has been working um, with a team and engaging different kinds of people. The vice president works with uh, a team of ministers and deputy ministers, CEOs and deputy CEOs, government agencies, civil servants, all, all manner of persons across the country. And the vice president, Dr. Baumia, as I have known, um, has proven beyond that over time that he is a team player. He's a good listener and he knows how to engage people. So that in itself is not going to be a problem for him um, having to navigate uh, across the diverse group of persons or individuals who have been assembled to form the team that we are seeing today. So on his part, I can say, that he has that temperament and attitude and character to be able to associate and work with everyone. I, I, I don't see anybody in government or anybody across the country who has seen the vice president even get angry at anybody mm -hmm. at all. So he knows how to work around people and he knows how to massage the egos of people. We're humans and he knows that the people that he's assembled together with the party to form the campaign team have their own individual, um, you know, character, individual uh, lifestyle. Some may have egos, some may have temperament and all of that. But he knows how to manage that. So that shouldn't be a problem at all. I think the biggest problem lies with those of us that are going to work with him. We have to know that we're going to work with a team. And therefore, uh, no one person's okay. knowledge. Yes, is That's what I was calling. Mm. And, and, uh, and, and also, I, I, I need to ask about some of the personalities in that in that list, um, because Joyce Ayi is definitely a surprise name for many people as they as they watch this. What has has she always been part of the team? And we are now formally putting it out there. Well, Miss Joyce Ayi, um, I have known for some time. She is like a mother to me and my wife, so we have that relationship with her. And uh, working with the vice president, you know, the vice president has been um, working together with a lot of faith-based faith organizations and people within the Christendom. And Ms. Joyce Ayi is one of such people, the people that the vice president would like to talk to on matters relating to faith and prayers and all of that. So they have had that kind of relationship over time. From time to time, she will invite, he will invite her to the office to discuss a few policies and issues that relate to um, faith, 
faith and Christianity or religion. So they have had that kind of relationship. And for him to bring her on board as one of the people who would be advising the campaign, I think the vice president has some deep love and respect for uh, Ms. Joyce IE and for what she has done in the country and what she stands for. And so I think that may be the main consideration why okay. um, he, he puts it up. Okay, and, and, and just to hit the nail on the head, the vice president is a Muslim. You have a reverend minister as part of this campaign team. Was that part of a thinking there? Somebody who can open the doors for him as he accesses the, the Christian community? Yeah, um, the vice president over time, I mean, throughout his life, his relationship with the Christian community and people in the Christian community has been great. I mean, I guess he, he had it tough to select who and who in a limited number to be part of this because he has so many friends in the Christian community. He has so many friends with pastors, so many friends with reverend ministers and people in the clergy. So um, getting one or two to be part of his team, I don't think was uh, a difficult thing to do. I think the main challenge would have been who to settle on because he has so many uh, friends in there, a very good relationship with them. And he also believes in religious diversity, as you have seen him. He goes to church, he quotes the Bible, he quotes the Quran and everything. He believes, believes in the diversity of religion. And so I'm not surprised at all that he forms such a formidable team and he has some men of God featured in the team. Okay, well, let me bring in the Deputy General Secretary uh, who is joining us. He represents the party here. Uh, uh, thank you very much, Haruna Mohammed. And Haruna, I must say, that you've really been on a marathon with us today. You were with us at the launch of the election headquarters at the forecourt of the AMA very early in the morning. And I know you had traveled into Accra and just came straight to the place and you're still here with me. And so, yes, I, I, I don't sympathize with you at all. Do not be fooled by the face. We are extremely <laughs> exhausted launching election headquarters at dawn and to come in to sit there and have a conversation. But, you know, the politicians put us through this every election year. Maybe at some point we need to surcharge them for the coverage that we provide. So, so Mustafa, <laughs> uh, uh, um, uh, Haruna Mohammed, Haruna. Let me, yeah, Haruna, let me yeah. ask you, and, and that's the thing between the two of you, Mustafa Mane and you, you become like brothers yeah, everywhere one, you go. One, one goes a cutlass, <laughs> the other one doesn't go with a cutlass. Yeah, you go. So, so let, let me ask you straight off. I believe you were part of the NEC meeting today, the National Council meeting. Exactly. I was part of it. So I, I see in the structure that you have the, the General Secretary and the National Organizer who are there heading operations. But I don't see, yes. the, I don't see the National Chairman. He's, he's conspicuously missing. Why? Um, the National Chairman is part of the campaign uh, uh, coordinating committee. Uh, that is where the vice president is. The vice president and the flag bearer is the chairman of the National Campaign Committee. And there are members of the National Campaign Committee that includes the national chairman, the general secretary, and all the 16 regional chairpersons. So the national chairman's work is very huge and uh, where he could be put and accorded the needed respect is to be part of the national uh, campaign coordinating committee. Okay, so he sits there, but he's, he's not necessarily included in your organogram, in the structure. He's I don't, included. I don't see if, you read, if you read the statement released by the general secretary, mm -hmm. uh, the second paragraph, it says, the national campaign coordinating committee shall have oversight, shall oversee the work of all other committees and shall be chaired by the 2024 presidential candidate and assisted by the vice presidential candidate when chosen. The national chairman, the general secretary, and the regional chairpersons mm. shall all serve on the national campaign coordinating committee. Mm. This is spelled out in the release by the general secretary, and this was exactly what was discussed at the national executive committee and approved by the national council of the party. Okay, so the national chairman, general secretary, and the general and the regional chairpersons shall all serve on the national a campaign coordinating committee. So that, that is a pretty vague uh, portfolio, I must say. I mean, the general secretary and the deputy general secretary, uh, the, deputy, the deputy general secretary and the national organizer, you have a very specific 
precise role in that structure. This one says, yeah, yeah I mean, there's some amorphous group the, of people. The, the National the Campaign Coordinating Committee is the superset. It is the body that will oversee the entire campaign. Mm. The General Secretary and the National Organizer heading the, uh, the operations team is one of the substructures to the superstructure. Mm. So they are fortunate to be part of the superstructure, which is the, the National Campaign Coordinating Committee, as well as holding a, a structure within the superstructure. So it's a substructure of the superstructure. And as a result of that, this has to be made very clear. Remember that the national chairman's role is very mm. big. Mm. Apart from campaign, there are party duties that the national chairman, other important very committees <clears throat> that has to be attended to, and other party assignment and all that. So where he can be properly placed, not to be given a specific role, is to be placed at the national campaign coordinating committee where his role will be wider and he can sit in any of these committees so as to provide direction and to guide in the work of these sub uh, structures within the superstructure and 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 help me understand the role of this campaign advisory committee and some really formidable former president the current president all sits there how how is that designed to function I mean, would they be holding regular meetings where the vice president has to meet them and get advice? How, what, what, what is the thinking there? Uh, you see, all these substructures that have been created, all these committees that have been created, uh, for example, the campaign advisory committee, um, they are not just to advise the, the flag bearer of the party alone. They are to advise every structure of the campaign depending upon what comes in. So if you look at the beauty of it, you see that all the National Council of Elders are in that committee. Mm. And if you look at the structure of the National Council of Elders, they are spread over with different knowledge from different sectors and industry. And the age of these persons and their contribution to the, from, to the party from beginning from 1992, you see that we have vast knowledge to tap in. And these advices, His Excellency President, at the Kung Fu Four, we all know uh, the structure, his stature, and what he can do when it comes to uh, advice on uh, parliamentary and then presidential elections, because he has been there before. Uh, his Excellency Nana Dukwe Kufuado, and you look at uh, uh, Honourable Frederick uh, 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 Rosemil Blay, former National Chairman, and then you also look at Madam Elizabeth Ohini, a very prolific writer. All of you know in the media cycles. Uh, you also look at uh, Joyce Sai, who has been uh, in, in the news for many times in terms of religious affairs, in terms of subject area discussions and all that. You look at Akosia Fumor Pari, who is the first female uh, 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 chief of staff in the history, has been a member of parliament before, has served on several other ministries. Uh, these are people that will be advising the entire campaign structure. Uh, every structure, be it operation, be it logistics, be it communication, because these people will be able to provide uh, solutions to answers uh, or answers to problems that will emanate in the campaign. Because the 2024 general elections is something that the party is very much prepared to ensure that we would not leave any stone uh, unattended to. Okay, and, and, and Gideon, you are with the, um, you're with the, you, sp you now speak for the flag bearer. You've done that for, for a long time. Your position really, to be honest, has not really changed. So give me a sense, give me a, give me a picture into the, into the minds of Dr. Bamia when he was penning this advisory committee together. Um, he would have to find a way of getting the former president Kufo and the current president to, to both work together to deliver that outcome. Uh, what, what is his relationship as we know? I mean, we saw the we saw the Kufo come to the venue and, and, and sort of give him a, a bit of, a, of an endorsement. So the assumption there is that he has a very good relationship with him already. But historically, we know that the Kufo and the Akufuado factions have been there for a while. Alan is already, we know, out of the picture. But he will need to find a way of sitting with both of them, former and current, and, and tap into their expertise. How has this been, been uh, conceived in terms of the practicalities of, of soliciting the advice. 
is it is it a formal engagement meetings with them or this is an informal setting where he can call them anytime he wants for advice so, sorry uh, Gideon please unmute for me can you hear me now I can yes yeah let me say that this structure of having a, a campaign advisory is not new to the new patriotic party um, in fact, President Kufuado in his campaign team setups um, had this structure of campaign advices. And I think Vice President Baumia did not depart from that kind of structure. Uh, if you ask me, uh, Baumia is somebody whose feet, I would say, bestride the thresholds to the gates of President Kufuado and President Kufu. He had said during the campaign to the Flabberash election, and President Kofo also stated it uh, at UPS the last time Vice President Baumia spoke, uh, spoke a couple of weeks ago. He said that he is the seed that was discovered by President Kofo and planted by President Kofo and watered by President Anadu Danko and Kofo Adu. So he has very good relationship with both gentlemen, Kofo and Kofo Adu, and he treats each one of them as a godfather, that is why he said that some people see that there are two gates or quote unquote factions in the NPP, but he, Baumia, sees that there are two godfathers in the NPP. And we are so fortunate and blessed that President Kufo is still alive, President Kufado is there, and Vice President Baumia can tap into the rich experiences of these two superheroes of our party uh, who have traversed you know, the journey, gone through the mail of going to Flatbara election multiple times, presidential elections multiple times, and succeeded and become successful presidents of the country. He feels that tapping into the experiences and the knowledge of these gentlemen, together with others, including uh, people like um, Mrs. Elizabeth Mahine, and all of that, is something that is going to help him a lot. As to how they will operate, I may not be able to determine because um, these are people who are experienced in politics. Today we have social media and many, many ways of communicating. Yeah. Looking at their ages and their strength, I don't think uh, holding formal regular meetings is something that is going to be the order of the day. Okay. But they are experienced people. Even when they blink their eyes, they know what they are communicating. So we leave how they want to operate and their models of privacy to themselves. But I know that these are going to be a rich source of advice and counseling to the candidates, to the campaign team, and to all other structures in the party. And like mm. the Deputy General Secretary said, they're not just going to advise the candidates, but to the party and the entire team. Okay. And when they see things going wrong, I know that they have what it takes to correct and make things right. Now, I want to bring in Dr. Marco Baum, who is a political science lecturer. He's, he, he's, he, he's also the uh, former head of the KNUSC. I would I will bring him into the conversation pretty shortly into that. But I want to take a quick break. When I return, um, we'll get into okay, so this is a name. These are the names that Dr. Bamia believe will deliver for him an an attempt to break the eight. Something that nobody's done before. Um, how do they go about doing just that? The specifics after the break. And you're still live here on PM Express. We're having a conversation, uh, a night in which we saw the vice president and candidate of the MPP outdoor his campaign team just a short while ago, just over an hour ago, about two hours ago uh, to be precise. And we're talking about that because this, of course, is an election year. And today we launched our election headquarters coverage, coverage of this year's elections. And you know our theme this year is towards an informed electorate. And we're happy that uh, we were joined by both NDC and MPP making pledges towards a peaceful poll. And so, yes, yeah, stay with us here on PM Express. And as you know, uh, PM Express is always brought to you by Syntex Tanks. It is also brought to you by uh, Alomo Bites. And Pepsodent also brings you uh, Syntex Tanks. We are delighted that they can all partner us. And as you know, Pepsodent uh, Cavity Fighter is fortified with pro-fluoride and micro-calcium ingredients sealing tiny and invisible holes in your teeth. This prevents cavities, keeps your teeth strong and mouth healthy. 
Now, pepsodent cavity uh, fighter uh, comes in several grams, 175 grams, 125 in Jaguar Park, uh, 65 grams, 12 uh, grams sachet. So you can't afford at any time. Now, don't just use toothpicks that brushes your teeth. Use pepsodent that protects your teeth. Pepsodent is recommended by the Ghana Dental Association. Pepsodent gives you the opportunity to talk to a dentist for free. Pepsodent, every smile matters. And Syntex Tank is a tank, is a tank for you. And uh, they, they come in all manner of sizes and shapes. And they are the tank that has the bespoke offering. You can just call them and they'll give you whatever size or color that you want. They make it available to you. They also have the seven years warranty. No other tank has that in Ghana. You can call them nationwide 0244-335-168, 0244-335-168, or shop online at syntexgh.com. Syntex tank, are you strong, are you tough? My guests have been the general secretary, the deputy general secretary of the MPP, uh, Haruna Mohammed, and also with me is the uh, spokesperson uh, for the flag bearer, Dr. Gideon Baku. And I want to bring in Dr. Maku Bao right now. He's a political science lecturer. He's a former head of the political science department at the KNUSC. And he joins me for a conversation right now. Now, um, Mr. Maku Bao, what's your reaction to this list? I've been going through that list. Some of them, many of them, you know very well. Good idea to have this 40 strong members to come together to form a team? Well, uh, it's good and bad. It's good in the sense that you know what they can do. But we've seen them so long. We need new blood, new ideas. Because the terrain has changed. That is the problem. And that too carries its own pitfall. Because if you bring some inexperienced people in, they can, they can cause a lot of trouble. Saying the wrong things and you, you be in trouble very quickly. So it's good and bad, but for now, let's wait a bit and see how it's going to pan out. If you look at the names on the list, some very strong individuals. We have this advisory committee that has advice. They, they have the former president, Kufo. We have the current president. We have Joyce Ayi there. You, you have some really strong individuals indeed. Now, the, the concern, as we've been uh, you know, discussing, is to get everybody else on that list to work together to prosecute a single agenda. Um, considering how strong each is. Uh, Freddie Blaze there, also Elizabeth Ohene, uh, Akusha Fremont Pyro, who is the current chief of staff. And then you have the campaign operations team, the, the party general secretary, and the national organizer. Um, how difficult is it to bring all these individuals together to prosecute that agenda? Well, that's what I'm saying is good and bad, because when you have such uh, big guys all together, each one believes in what he's saying, and then uh, sometimes you're not careful. You run into a uh, concrete ego. So which one should we take? You know, uh, nobody wants to back down. The fact that you're a big man, that's not mean, uh, that's not mean you have a good study. It does. Sometimes you need an entirely new person, new idea. Right? But this is how we are. We like that. We like the one we already know, we feel comfortable about that, so we don't try new things. That's what I see. There are no new faces in it. You see? And so, let's wait and see what happens. Let me ask you your verdict on this. Fundamentally, Dr. Baume had put this team together, and the task they have is to do the impossible. At least nobody had done that before to break the eight. You look at the names on the list, are they capable? Well, that's not the case. That's for sure. It's But whether it's going to deliver what we need, that remains to be seen. Uh, as we go forward, not letting it into the future, we will see whether it's going to work out or not. And sometimes when you put such powerhouses together, you know, you put, you know, Messi and Ronaldo, all of them together. It doesn't mean it's a good thing. Because they are all good, each one believes in itself, they are all big guys, so nobody is listening to anybody, everybody wants to score. What do you do about that? And even if there's a mistake, and someone wants to correct something, it becomes difficult because of the people involved. That's what I'm saying. Mm. Uh, we tend to want people like that. 
you know, I remember distinctly uh, well, we are head of the economic team, many people on the on that team. Uh, this one, and he was speaking so proudly. So what happened to them? What happened to them? The same thing I'm seeing now. Just because they're all good, they're all big guys in their own realm, but some being which we put all of them together, we do want them. That's my story, we think that will happen. Mm. Um, and Gideon Boako, finally to you. Now the team is here. What's the plan now going forward from now? He's launched his campaign. His campaign team is out. What's the strategy? Are we going to see him hit the ground? Is he adopting a, a campaign style like we've seen before where you go house to house? Is, is he adopting the rally approach? Well, what's, what's the, what, what are we going to see the team do from here? Hello, Gideon. Please unmute for me. Please unmute for me. Yes, can you hear me? I can, yes. Yeah, the team has been put together. Um, there's leadership to the team. And I'm sure in the coming days, the leadership will outline what they want to do. Mm. Um, but the vice president continues to be the vice president. He will go about his duties as the vice president. He will also embark on his duties and responsibilities as a flag bearer of the party. And... Um, being his spokesperson, as I know what he wants to do, um, I'm sure in the next week or so, there are a few trips that you embark across the country, and part of it will also be engagement with some party people and other um, sections of the Ghanaian community. So he will continue to do that. And then I'm sure once the campaign team also comes up with a plan, he would have to adjust and uh, move in line with the plan that the campaign team will come up with. But as we speak today, the names have just been put out, the team has just been put out. We need to give them some time to come out to the strategies and the plans that they want to, um, to, to deploy. But the vice president continues to play the dual responsibility of a flag bearer of the party and the vice president of the, of, of, the, of the country. So these are things that he does every day and you continue to, to do that until there is a campaign uh, team strategy for him to move along with. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Gideon. Thank you very much, uh, Haruna Mohammed, and uh, also to you, uh, Dr. Makoba, who joined us with your thoughts. And that's it uh, for PMS tonight. And tonight, when we got to know the campaign structure for Dr. Baumia, we now wait to see what the campaign structure will look like for John Dramani Mahama. When that comes out, we'll be here talking about it. And the NDC folks will join us for a conversation also. I mean, there are a few big things you're looking forward to. There's that, and there's a running mate's choice. You'll be sure to trust the lecture quarters. We'll be bringing you the ticket. A very special show indeed when that time comes. You don't want to miss that. The ticket solving whichever puzzle there is between the candidate and the running mate. This is your election headquarters. Catch you tomorrow.